Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to a brand new video. So yesterday, a new Grandmaster quest was released to the game. And with that, we got ourselves a new, brand new City of Privdiness or something like that. It's hard for me to pronounce it, but let's just call it Elf City. And with that, there's a lot of new things that we can do. And this video is going to be showcasing pretty much all the things that we can do. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and enjoy everything that Privdiness has to offer. We are now located in the southeastern part of the city. You have some rare trees right here, and those rare trees are yew trees. Uh, they look very different compared to the, you know, usual yew trees, but definitely a spot that I guess you can chop some trees. Realistically, I don't see anyone will ever use this spot, but it is here if you want to chop some trees. Moving just a little bit north of the trees, you have a smithing shop where you can buy a rune pickaxe, so that's nothing necessarily too good, but I mean, if you need a rune pickaxe for some reason, you can buy it right here. Moving just a little bit north, there's a general store and the first bank, and this bank is kind of useful because if you go just a little bit west, you have your first skilling boss, which is Zolcano. Now, in order to defeat Zolcano, I recommend you to just have a couple of brews and a stamina in your inventory and join a world that already has a couple of people. So, Zolcano is very self-explanatory, you can stand on the on the blue circles and you're gonna deal extra damage and if you send on the red circles you're gonna be taking extra damage. Zulcano will also be dropping a um, will also be dropping stones that you need to avoid and uh, I'll show you the full run after this um, after this skill. So first you need to basically mine these rocks. Uh, I'll show you when the spawns. You need to mine the rocks, then you need to smelt the rocks, then you need to runecraft the rocks, and then you need to throw that into the boss, and then when the boss is down, you can start mining the boss. So technically it is mining, smithing, and runecrafting boss, newly released to the game, and let's give it a shot. A full game should be very, very quick when you do it in a larger group of people. Uh, once again, as you can see what people are wearing, mostly people do go uh, to that graceful look, because you do run a lot. So I recommend you to get about two or three uh, tephra if you're doing it in a mass then you smelt it there we go and then you run to the other side avoid the red okay yeah you know what yeah just run straight through it no problem <laughs> i don't know why i ran like that and then you're gonna have imbued tephra uh, I'm just gonna brew up because why not and then you throw in Butte Tefra into the actual boss so ideally I guess you get three three is better than two and then you mine it when it's down the HP goes down, usually you need to do two or three rotations like that, so that was rotation number one, it got it to about 75% I'd say, and once again we're gonna be mining three, there you go, just, wow, I got three in one go, we smith it, we run to the other side, we imbue it, and then after that, okay, we make it invisible apparently, we imbue it right here, and then if there are blue rings, I usually step in them, but if there's no blue rings, we just throw it, so there we go, we have blue ring right here, extra damage, perfect, and it's going down, and now we mine it once again. So the loot from this, you can get a pet, and you can also get some uh, ores and some smithing supplies. So it's not bad, honestly. I've done it just a tiny bit, just to, you know, give it a shot, because uh, I was spending most of my time in actual um, in actual gauntlet, which we're, we're going to be showing, like, in a moment. Um, but anyways, a very simple, self-explanatory uh, skilling slash... Yeah, just scaling boss pretty much. Um, but it's nice, it's nice. I'll definitely spend some time here. The problem is you don't really get XP, which sucks. Like, I wish you could get some, I don't know, mining XP doing this because mining is just boring. Um, but anyways, here we go. The boss is completed. Uh, my KC is number something. And uh, six. And we get some runite ores. What? Hold up. We just got 34 runite ores. That is really, really good. There you go. And now if you move a little bit west from Zolcano himself, we will find another dungeon. You can enter the cave entrance and here we're gonna have a mine. Uh, a mine consists of iron ores, mithril ores, uh, gold ores, then here should be, I think, uh, some coal and then some adamant. This is coal, this is adamant. There should be some rune at least, I think there's just like one rune, uh, rune rock to the south. Um, but nothing special from this mine. So yeah, this is gonna be rune, I would assume. Yeah, one rune over here, and then one rune over here, and then, oh, okay, it's three rune ores, apparently. 
So this one is also gonna be rune, and this one's gonna be rune, and these here are sti no, are uh, silver. So those are the ores that you can find here. Oh, those, that's actually coal. Okay, so there's two rune ores, unless I'm missing something. But basically a mine, will it ever be populated? Highly doubt it. Um, but as you can see, we do have some like three, three by three ore spawns. So what even is this? Oh, you have soft clay. Okay, so you have soft clay around, you have you know, the rocks, you have, everything is like in a tree area, so you can stand in the middle and mine it pretty much, uh, but I still don't think many people are going to be doing this, but we do have this new mine, if you want to enter it and mine stuff, by all means, you can do it. And if we move a little bit west of the mine, we're going to have a first sword shop, where we can afford a rune scimitar and dragon halberd and dragon dagger, nothing special, don't really think many people are going to be buying from this shop, I feel like these shops could have so much more uh, because it's such a late game quest, like, it's like, rune, I don't, I don't think anyone will ever be buying things from the shops, and that's a little bit sad, you know, we could, we could be buying things from them. Uh, but anyways, this is the two shops, the armor and the weapon shop, and you can uh, also pickpocket the elves everywhere around the game. The pickpocket gives you 353 experience, and if you open it, we are never gonna know how much money that was, so let's do it again. Uh, let's do it again, and we can drop the coins real quick, and each pouch gives you 317 coins, so pretty interesting. Um, will I ever be thieving these? Probably not, because I'm 99, but I could see how some people could, uh, could be thieving them. And here you can watch the gladiator matches, for some reason, it's really, they're just walking around and hitting each other, but kind of cool. Slowly moving to the western part of the city, we have a bunch of... Um, filler content which is never gonna be used we have like a cooking range there and we have like let's see what she has but i don't think she is offering anything much it's a die seller so just probably all sorts of dice yeah nothing special there we have an estate agent over here alwyn if you want to move your house or do anything about that you have that possibility there and we also have another dungeon would you look at that so this dungeon consists of a couple of monsters blood welds Necreals, Mosh Giants, and uh, Dark Beasts, and Kurasks. Um, so if we go through the actual gap right here, I don't know the agility shortcut required for this gap, so excuse me. Uh, but if we just go and take a look how the dungeon looks, it has a nice little blue vibe to it. Um, and I can see how maybe someone will be killing stuff here. But realistically, the only monster I think maybe Dark Beasts and maybe Necreals, or if uh, the, the Conar assigns them. So we have a bunch of Dark Beasts here. Oh, you can probably cannon them kind of okay, I guess. And we also have um, some Kurasks way, way down uh, right here that you can do. Probably faster to get to them here than it is to get to them to Releka. So I can see how people are going to do that. And for some reason, there are Mosh Giants in this dungeon. Um, so you can do those as well. Let's go check them out. But yeah, going past the Blood Velds. Um, it's a good looking dungeon, but will it actually be used? I don't think a lot of people are going to be doing stuff in here, because I don't really understand why Moss Giants are in the dungeon. It's not multi, so you can't cannon. Um, yeah, it's just, I guess, an extra dungeon, so you can... It's probably the the things that people will kill are Dark Beasts and Kurasks in this dungeon. Um, but it, it's here, in the southwestern corner of the city. If you want to give it a, you know, an explore yourself, go for it. It is time to move a little bit north of the city. We can uh, trade Leanne right here, and she's gonna give you some cosmetics. And uh, <clears throat> if you are uh, dumb enough, you can buy this untradeable item for 250 mil. I would highly not recommend you to do that. And you can also buy some elven gear. Let's take a look at how this looks. Here we go, we bought all the chances. So we have, uh, well, we have like this outfit with uh, this outfit and then we have like this outfit with this outfit i mean it doesn't look bad so if you're into fashion scape kind of things by all means this is the new shop that you can buy things from so take advantage of it if you want it costs about 5k per piece so it's not too bad it's not too good and if we move a little bit northwest we have some needle and thread that we can buy um i don't understand the need of these shops but they're there so if you want them, you can do them, and you can make the fur clothes as well, if uh, that's something you're interested in. Moving northeast of the gauntlet, you have a pub. Let's see what beers they're selling. Just a beer, something a bit fruity. Let's buy that. So you can buy a cedar, 
I don't know how you call that. You can also buy something to eat, which is a stew. And then you can also buy some, th some kind of local speciality. And that is going to be Elven Dawn. So let's drink Elven Dawn. The stats went to shit. And did we get a boost in anything? I don't know, think... Oh, we got a one agility boost. Very interesting. And uh, if we drink Cedar, we got a farming boost. And then if we eat a stew, we got nothing. So, uh, interesting, interesting. If you need one agility level, I guess that's one way to do it. Kind of cool. And then if we move a little bit more here, we also have another room. So these platforms all lead to till the end. I'll show you guys in the end. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different platforms from like different, uh, I don't even know, like elf areas. And they all connect to the center. But I'll, I'll show that in the very end. So if you're wondering how we're going about exploring the city, we're going like in the circular all around and then in the end we're gonna take a look in the middle. So uh, if we speak to Elgin, or we're just a little bit north of where we previously were, he is a battle stuff seller, uh, or a staff seller rather. So you can buy a bunch of staffs, it's the same as the guy in Varrock. Uh, and then if we move over here, we're gonna have some rare trees. This time around, these are magic trees that you can chop and they are fairly close to the bank. But once again, the ones in the woodcutting guild would be a little bit better to do. If we move a little bit more north, we're gonna be finally seeing the gauntlet and a rune shop. So if we trade with uh, Elfa right here, Effa, uh, you can buy some runes. Um, this shop is probably never gonna be botted, so that's kinda cool. So you can always expect to be able to buy runes here. So I actually think I will be using this shop, which is kinda cool. And then here we have the entrance to the gauntlet. Now I'm not gonna put a full gauntlet run in this video, simply because I've done the video yesterday where I explain it. It's not an ideal video, it's a pretty fast one, uh, but nonetheless you can enter the gauntlet right here. We're gonna be making future videos about loot from certain amount of gauntlet, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but this is where you enter it, it's in northwestern part of the city, so by all means you can hop here and go in the dungeon. All right, we can now start moving a little bit northeast once again, and we have, believe it or not, Rune Mace Shop. What the fuck were the, huh? All right, well, I guess you can spend 14k on a Rune Mace if you so desire. But moving a little bit south is another cool thing about the Priv. You here have an agility shortcut, but also you have some flags. Do you want to pick some flags? Go for it. You can also look at the statistics and uh, you've completed 18 laps of this agility course. My best time was one, uh, 118 and there has been 30,000 global completions and the global best time is 103. So you can see what the fastest lap is, which is kind of cool. You can try, let's try to beat the fastest lap. Realistically, this is probably not going to happen because you can get certain portals in the actual run that will give you shortcuts. Uh, but this, uh, we're just gonna do a quick little lap of agility, just to show you how it is. I personally really like it, but I think the experience rates is not as good as our Dune course. I might be wrong on that, and if I am, please let me know in the comments. But I'm pretty sure this is slower experience rate than our Dune, and I do not like that. I feel like if something is locked behind a such a grandmaster quest and so many like hard things to do, in my opinion, you should at least be able to get a couple K more than in Ardun. The level requirement, I do believe, is 90, so it's the same for both courses. Uh, but I really, really like this course, because it is just really enjoyable. You can, uh, you know, hop around these trees, you go in and out of the city, it is nice. The one thing I would change... Oh, look at this portal. So this is the shortcut that I was talking about. Boop, and it just gives you to the next obstacle. But the one thing I would do is when you enter the dark hole, to perhaps make this course a little bit better, is to not have that really long black screen. Because this course incentivizes you to actually, like, pay attention. Um, and maybe if there was not th that black screen, you can increase the XP rate per hour by a little bit. But nonetheless, uh, that was... Wait, that was 108, and I do believe that's the fastest time. Hold up. Wait... No, it's 103. Never mind. Well, I was kind of optimistic there, but my new personal best right there. And I'm definitely going to be training on this course because I prefer it probably all the way to 99 agility. Very nice. Moving a little bit east of the actual bank, we now have a new shop from Derwen. And uh, she sells, well, a bunch of food that will probably not be used too much, I would assume. I mean, if you're into some uh, potatoes, by all means, you can buy them here or maybe chocolate dust. Uh, feel free to buy it here. Um, but then if we move a little bit north, we have more elves. 
we have Lina, um, and we also have a new uh, Herblor shop or whatever, uh, but it doesn't sell anything particularly useful. If we talk to Lilo, uh, as you can see, it just sells the generic Eye of Newt packs with water vials and stuff like that. So we also have a well right here, and one of the things that a lot of people are probably going to be doing is the Crystal Tree patch. Now we need to get a Crystal Tree seed for that, and I don't know the rarity of that, but the chance is, and uh, you can plant it right over here. Um, and once you have that done, uh, you can also move a little bit south, and here you have a new flower and allotment patches that you can use, and some cabbages. Believe it or not, you can pick up cabbages just for yourself. Moving north, we have a couple of new rare trees that we can chop. Well, not new, but they're not yew trees, so those are probably going to be used a little bit more. We have mahogany trees. You cannot access this one, so you can only chop these two. And you also have tick trees. And on top of that, you can also create planks uh, for, uh, by speaking to sawmill operator just a little bit south. Uh, but as you can see, you have tick logs that you can chop. You can chop all three, I do believe. And uh, you can also chop... Um, these two mahoganies. And then you can create planks, so you can just buy planks, uh, buy tick, and then buy plank, and buy mahogany if you want. And then probably, oh, I, I didn't do all, whoops. And then probably the way you go about it is you, once you have full inventory, I would assume you teleport either to back to Prif, and then run north and bank, and nah, this one's bad. How about the crystal seed? Let's try the crystal seed. So let's say you have full inventory of planks, is it better to just teleport? If you teleport to Prif, yeah, it's probably just best to run. It's really not very convenient. I feel like this place should have a bank fairly close. I mean, we're talking Prif, we're talking late game content. And so far, I can only see myself doing two, two things in the city, which is Gauntlet and Volcano. So I do believe that some smaller things such as adding a bank close to sawmill perhaps like right over here or right over here somewhere um would you know help things out a little bit to create more planks uh but outside of that when it comes to just generic things i don't think you can do that many things in Prif. um but that's just inside of the city we're also going to be taking a look at the center, and then we're gonna see what you can do outside of the city. So that was pretty much everything. There is still a little bit of uh, farming shops that I didn't really show, um, but nothing too special. Aside from perhaps there's one more thing that is worth mentioning, and that would be... Yeah, I don't think it's worth mentioning. I think it sells some rune, uh, some, uh, rune arrow shops, this archer right here. Uh, but just for the sake of the video, let's show it. So you can buy some rune arrows here, I believe. And they cost 400 each, which is a little bit too expensive for the rune arrow. So I don't think it will ever be used at that shop. And here you have just a generic farming shop. Um, I never actually tried to kill these guards, elf guards. Maybe they do drop something good. Maybe it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, perhaps for the future video, we can kill a certain number of... Um, what are they called? We can kill a certain number of the guards. Let me know if you're interested in something like that and we can do it. But here they are. These guards are high level. So maybe they do drop something useful. As you can see, they are wearing... Well, it seems to be a little bit of a scuffed version of a rune square shield. And, uh, well, definitely might give it a shot for the future release. But nonetheless, that's inside the city. Let's check the very center. Ha! Huh, it wouldn't be my video if I didn't forget about something. Uh, on the very south... Um, southeastern part of the city, I completely forgot to mention the Sing Crystal. What you can do in here is you can create keys with your crystals, you can create stuff with your crystal shards. Now I'm gonna, here I'm gonna probably just show you how, uh, let's just do loot from two, and this is actually a decent smithing and crafting method. Hold up, that's 500 XP each, that's like super fast. If you have a bunch of keys, a bunch of shards, you make a ton of these, Crafting and smithing goes up like crazy. That is something I'm gonna be doing on my Iron Man. That is very, very interesting. And here on the crystal singing recipes, you can see exactly what you can create. Uh, and then there's another thing that you can do by using a crystal shard on a pestle and mortar. Uh, you can create a crystal dust. And by using the crystal dust on any potion, you can create a divine whatever it is potion. And what that does is once you drink it, you lose a little bit of health, but 
your stats never go down and I'm already damaged. So you know what, let's just drink it again and let's just drink it again. I just wasted like 50k, but it doesn't matter. As you can see, these stats are not gonna go down for five minutes. I'm gonna be 118 attack, 118 strength for f for the full duration. And that's gonna be very useful for stuff at, like, um, for stuff like uh, Slayer, PVMing, stuff like that. Those potions are gonna be the potions that you will want to get. So they're just budget uh, overload potions, pretty much. Um, so, but yeah, that's a pretty cool thing that I forgot to mention. And now let's check what the center has to offer. Once we are in the center, we can go up the crystal staircase. And once we do that, we are right here next to the Elven chest. And a cool little uh, trick, if you search your desk, you see all of the cool content creators that have helped with the project. Um, so we have some nice names such as Settled, Skiddler, Aiza, um, I think Sick Nerd is there, we have MMORPG, Arwam Turco, I can't mention everyone, but we have a bunch of awesome creators here on the list and they're gonna be in game forever, which is really, really sick. And then right next to that we have an Elven Crystal Chest that we're gonna be opening right now for a grand total of a Uncut Dragonstone with Rune Play Skirt and the new opening is... I don't know what I got there actually. Uh, I think I got some coins, uh, but there you have it. You, it's a way of, you know, opening your crystal keys and I have a bunch of them stacked on my Iron Man, so I'm very happy about that. And if we move to the western part of the actual Prifdina's, um, you know, center, we can use this teleport platform and get to the library. So in this library, you can find a bunch of books uh, and then you can read those books if you're into roar, uh, lore. Uh, as you can see, there is a bunch of books. If you feel like reading, by all means, do read. And I don't think there's anything else to explore in this uh, in this area, unfortunately. It's just a nice looking area and yeah, you can just basically explore the lore behind the, the, the game. So if you're into that kind of stuff, this is your place to be. So here we also have a memoriam device just a little bit south of the actual tree. And I don't know what this part is meant for. Um, if you guys know in the comments, do let me know. I do not know what these memories, how do you get them and what you can do with them. Uh, but it's here. If, you know, you want to do something with it, you know what to do with it, by all means, use it. Uh, but we're now going to be going ahead and checking some Easter eggs outside of the city. Uh, because there's also a couple of cool things that you can do outside of the city. Moving out of the city to the north, we have a brand new hunter area. Now, do I think this hunter area will be used? Most likely not, because those are just regular chins. If perhaps those were black chins, I would be talking differently, but no, those are red chins, and uh, there are better ways to catch the red chins, especially with this being in the middle, it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, um, having like a square-looking trap situation going. Um, so it's a little bit awkward to be catching things. But nonetheless, there's a possibility to catch stuff there. And if I am not mistaken, there should be a red panda here. Look at it. It's a red panda. Look how cool it looks. Well, that's a new NPC in the game. And it looks pretty nice, I think. It looks good. All right, well, let's collect our chins and let's check the rest of the stuff in the actual place. By moving north of the city, you get to some docks and all of the fishing areas around this place have a harpoon, big net and cage option. So it's basically like you were fishing on a Karamja. Nobody is going to be using these fishing spots. Perhaps if they were fly, uh, if they were, um, you know, barbarian fishing spots, we would have maybe some people use them. Um, but because it's just cage and harpoon and big net and harpoon, I don't think many people are gonna be ever fishing on these areas but nonetheless it's a cool little just scenery i guess and here is actually a cool little thing because apparently as you can see there's a master stash right here which means there's a new master step uh, but also we have some maple trees around this area if you want to woodcut some maple trees and just drop them for some reason you can do this here and it's gonna be a very peaceful spot so we have that going for us if we start moving a little bit southwest of that actual area, we have a cool little smaller city of uh, Gwenith uh, that I probably mispronounced. Uh, but there's a cool little easter egg that I found yesterday by going around this area. And you can go up this mountain and you will actually find Ed, uh, which is, I do believe, the mod uh, behind this actual quest release. And you can have some uh, conversation with him and we're gonna do that in just a moment. So just going across this um, mountain right here, you get some wire wolf, dire wolves, um, another dire wolf right here. And the cool thing is there's going to be like a black dragon on the top. Obviously, nobody's ever going to be killing the black dragons here, I would assume, uh, because it's really so out of the way. Like, there's no reason to do it. But here, here we have it. Here we have the Ed. 
and you can talk with him. He is, uh, you know, rocking his his fashion scape, and uh, he does kind of look like uh, the mod at himself. I would assume that's w why he's here. If I'm wrong, I'll I'll be just a little bit embarrassed, but. Uh, um, you can have a little bit of conversation with him, for example, you can say, hey, your hair is on fire, and he's gonna hit you with, get out of it, and you can also ask him, that's a nice set of armor, and he will tell you that I think he's searching for the helmet, and then, what are you doing all the way over here, and then he's gonna tell you that he is, once again, looking for a helmet, um, and uh, apparently he buried it somewhere, but now he cannot find it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that the new Privdinius area has to offer as far as I know. If I, for some reason, missed anything, please do let me know in the comments. I tried to go through everything, uh, but maybe there's something hidden that I completely missed. Um, obviously, you can create most of those armors in the very center that I didn't exactly fully mention at the start. And that's gonna be one of those most used things, I'd say. Um, so if we go back to that singing ball right over here in the southeastern corner of the city this is probably where most of the content will come from so the crystal keys the 500 cons uh, the 500 xp in crafting and smithing is wild i have like 100 i have like 100 crystal keys on the iron man that's gonna be 50k experience that's gonna be pretty nice man it's gonna be pretty damn nice but let's just uh you know see exactly all the things that we can still create and once again you will no longer be able to enchant the crystal sets in nightmare zone so i don't know where you do that so i'm definitely missing that part uh but here we have everything that we can create and i don't know if you create the crystal shield for example how do you make it enchanted if you know the answer to that question let me know in the comments Hopefully you did enjoy the video and hopefully you are enjoying the new Privdinius content. As a person who has completed the Priv questline in RS3 as well, there is a lot more things that you can do in RS3 that you can do here. But the definitely two big things that I will be taking from this update are gonna be the... Uh, or three actually, are gonna be the Zolcano, are gonna be the Gauntlet and this singing ball for those keys, the crystal keys. Um, and obviously maybe also the crystal armor. Also, you can get that new crystal weapon from the gauntlet, and uh, that's definitely something we're going to be hunting for in the next few days. Um, but those are basically all the things that you can do in Priv, um, and uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. And if you made it this far, why not give the video a like and subscribe with notifications on so you catch my next uploads. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around. Have a good day, and bye-bye.